Okay. Let's see if we can do this before the battery goes dead again. Ruben, there's your axle. It's broken. Okay. We need to go from like here to here. You need to grind that out all around, Ruben. Okay, you need to put your angle line across the bottom here again and clamp it. You need to get your torches out and heat it. Heat it, Ruben. Heat it. Just keep heating it and work your way up the axles. I would say go up the axles a good six inches. You don't have to have that super hot up here. But this is going to keep wicking the heat out. So make this hot and it will wick the heat out slower from here. So heat it, slow down, heat it, and work your way faster, then heat it, heat it. And when this is good and hot, Reuben, go across this way and just bridge it. Go slow, hold the thing at full heat, and penetrate as hard as you can in there. Do that in three spaces. So if you're looking at the pipe like this, oh, I don't know where I am with it, if you find it. Hit it here, whoops, hit it here, hit it here, and hit it here like a triangle. Okay, then take it out of the jig and spin it. And with all the heat you got, Reuben, just keep bridging it across in between. Whoops, keep bridging it across. Not all the way up to the top, just keep bridging it until you've bridged it all the way around. In between, after a weld or two, heat it with the torch. Because your welder is not powerful enough to penetrate this much material. This is gonna this is gonna wick the heat out quick. Get this as hot as you can. And it should melt like butter in there. But you're gonna do strips. You're not gonna go this way yet. So you're gonna come across, in reality, you're gonna come across oh, I don't know. Half an inch. Whoops, half an inch across. Okay? So when you've done that all the way around, keep moving the pipe. Okay? Make sure this is all good and clean. Then just keep laying welds across. But don't do all in one spot. Lay a couple of welds, lay a couple of welds, spin it, you know, on the jig, and just lay a couple of welds. And if you got to grind in between, lay it until you're at the surface or a little higher. It's going to take a little while. But if you grind this thing down long enough, don't just grind it down. If this is the thing, don't just grind it down a hair. So you have just a little bit of weld in there. You want more than that. You want with a points that you ground it down to for argument's sake when you lay these beads across okay the heat from this side is going to make it through to the other side that's how narrow you want it down not as narrow as this but the narrower you make it you don't have to make it a big long taper either you can make it a pretty sharp taper okay but the narrower you make this the stronger it's going to be because this is going to become solid weld and the smaller you make this the actual uh, more material you have biting the two axles together if you just chamfer it down lightly and put a weld around it it's going to keep snapping off because the axle is not strong enough to begin with for some godforsaken reason either they use the wrong material it's too narrow there's something up with it do it like that Ruben and I'll guarantee you it won't break off again. But, Ruben, put everything you got into it with the welder. Don't rush across. Don't look for the perfect bead. Just fire it up. Full voltage and go very slow across to bridge it. And like I said, in three places, flip the jig. Go in between those. Flip the jig. Just keep going in between those till you got the whole thing welded. Okay? Keep warming it up, and then keep laying more beads on it. Warm it up, lay more beads on it. The thing is going to get pretty hot. So, and obviously as you weld, the heat's going to work its way out here. So if you keep warming it, it's not going to suck it out or draw it out as fast. Okay, Reuben? But don't be afraid to chamfer it. you got to get in there and grind the shit out of it. Take the one piece that's out on your hand, and go to your bench. Grind it down nice. Do the other side. I guess you're going to have to do it with a hand grinder on the unit. Because I don't think the axle comes out if I remember right. But I could be wrong. Okay? And don't worry if the two sides aren't the exact same size when you're done grinding it. Or if they're a little off. The key is to jig it square. And even if there's, there's two pieces... 
that you do say one of them's crooked like that or whatever whatever it is I can't draw it through the viewfinder you're gonna work the weld in there it doesn't matter until you flush and then come up across okay so don't worry about a gap there's a gap you're gonna just stick the wire in there I mean I would stick the wire in there on one edge heat it up right come out this way a hair to bite in and then go across so use your original weld as a, as a bridge so you're gonna go you go in the hole up out of the hole bite in and then back across okay and then do that everywhere you have to do it like that slow a lot of heat don't try and rush it like you're, you're welding a fender just lay the heat into it the more heat the better because it's a thick piece and like I said it's a big heat sink and I think it'll work again Ruben I mean look how long you got out of it last time okay if it broke that quick on you then uh, it just wasn't there's just not enough penetration so heat is definitely the fact that the warmer you can get that metal the better penetration you're going to get from the weld because that's all your weld there is is a dead short and it's making heat and the heat makes the metal melt and flow together and the rod is supposed to be a fillet to fill in between the void you made so the more heat the better Ruben hot hot in case you didn't hear hot so with that I'm gonna go inside and ice my back so there's still ice out there and under we got like that much snow and it covered all the ice <laughs> so okay Ruben let me know how it turns out so we'll get it figured out and I left a comment on your uh, thing you can call Summit I'm sure Jegs has it too has it too you could buy brake line by the roll it's rolled up in a coil um, it's flexible to the point where you can bend it with your hands to a point I mean you're not gonna you're not gonna make it turn that tight without kinking it uh, but that's what you use sockets for this is my bending for all my brake lines and all my brake lines come out in mint I use a variable size of sockets I take the extension clamp it in the vise rest that on the vise and I use this to make all my bends hold it with one spot and you roll it with your thumb around and you can make some really tight stuff but you buy the brake line by the roll it's actually realistically priced it's definitely flexible, more flexible than the rigid crap you're going to buy from the store. And by the time you buy all those lines from the store and all the couplers, you'll go broke. Uh, you go under there, you make up the whole line from front to rear, take it out from under the car, slip the two fittings on, flare the two ends, go under there and put it in, and you're done. Done. One line from front to back. Okay? So, and if you need a hand with that, I could easily walk you through flaring. You're not going to have a problem flaring a brake line, Ruben. It's so